So you are dealing with difficult people and you feel like these people keep bringing you down. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to deal with difficult people and how to take your power back. So stay tuned. Hello everyone, Dominica here with you. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how to deal with difficult people and how to take your power back. So before I begin, definitely subscribe to my channel and like this video, especially if you happen to resonate with the upcoming content of this video. So you're dealing with difficult people. Well, the meaning of difficult people may mean different things to all of us. In this video, I'm going to refer to difficult people as those that bring us down, as those that take our power away from us, and people that make us feel so powerless. Some of you might refer to these people as narcissists. Some of you might refer to these people as haters. Some of you might refer to these people as difficult. Well, in this video, I'm going to be referring to these people as difficult, as people like that generally tend to bring us down and make us feel very powerless. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about ways that you can deal with difficult people and how can you take your power back. Number one, realize that no one intentionally asks to be a narcissist, a villain, a bad guy, or just difficult, especially in the eyes of other people. It generally stems from their perception of the world and these perceptions generally stem from uh, deeper rooted issues. So what issues could they be? So for a lot of people, these issues stem from all the way from their childhood or from any other trauma that they had in the past. And chances are, if these people are uh, deemed as difficult, chances are they're still wounded because their trauma hasn't yet been processed by them and they haven't healed just yet. So this may be the reason why they're treating uh, people the way they're treating. And we're very important to realize as well that they may be treating others like that too from the perception of a wounded person. So this is very important to realize. This is, uh, this is their perception of the world while well, you have your own perception of the world. So realizing this can become very powerful because it automatically puts you uh, from a position of empathy. And this position is a lot more powerful than uh, a position of anger. So you being angry at them versus you being empathic towards them. They're two different things and it's a lot more powerful to be, uh, to be looking at these people from the lens of empathy as opposed to anger. Because if you look at these people from a lens of anger, anxiety and so forth, it'll put you in a lot weaker posi position and you will only end up hurting your own self in the long run. Number two. So as I was saying about the empathy, it's very important as well to have empathy towards yourself as well while dealing with difficult people. So why, why is that important? When you're dealing with a difficult individual, as we said earlier, a difficult individual uh, doesn't choose to be difficult in the first place. It all stems from uh, the past trauma that chances are wasn't yet processed by that person and the healing work wasn't yet done. And as well, chances are that person isn't aware that he or she is upsetting you because this is now his or her perception of this world. So realizing that becomes very important, especially when it comes to showing empathy towards yourself. So how do you show empathy towards yourself? So by you taking a healthy step back, when you feel that like there's nothing more you can do for that person, so empathy is not the same as sympathy. As I said in my earlier videos, sympathy is when, I'll give you an analogy, when you see a person drowning and you're trying to help them out, but they actively refuse. Well, you, then you take a step back because there's literally nothing you can do and some of the work they have to do themselves. So the same applies with difficult individuals and realizing that will become quite powerful when you are dealing 
with a difficult individual or even a group of individuals. Number three, and this is very important, realizing who you are. And you might be thinking, why is this even relevant? Well, let me explain. It's very important to realize who you are and actually enhance those qualities, enhance it being yourself. So chances are, if you are watching this video, you're quite a sensitive person, you're an empath, you're kind, you're generous, you're all these lovely things because otherwise you wouldn't be watching this video and chances are you wouldn't even be a target of these difficult people. And this by no means is an offense. While kindness can be perceived as weakness by those, by those difficult people, but that's because this is how their perception of uh, life is. This is how their brain is wired to perceive kindness as weakness, but by no means kindness is weakness. It's a lot easier to be angry back to the person that's upsetting you. It's a lot easier to go and seek re revenge than to be kind to somebody that's not kind to you. It's a lot easier to do these things in the short term. However, they all lead you to long-term degradation. And there's multiple, multiple writings about this. And, and I'm sure you've heard of that before. So why do we generally do that? Well, first of all, if you engage in who you are, it's a lot easier to live your life being who you are as opposed to becoming someone that you don't want to be. So let me give you an example. Um, I recently heard a parable. It's a tale about the wise man and his neighbor. So the wise man had a garden full of fresh fruits and vegetables that he had grown himself and the neighbor was was very envious of this wise man so one morning he picked up a bucket and filled it up with dirt to say to say the least and he brought this bucket onto the wise man's porch and left it there and and he just left so the next morning wise man wakes up and he sees this bucket full of dirt and instead of going going with this bucket next door and revenge or argue or whatever whatever it is you know he decided to look after the bucket he got rid of all the dirt in it he washed and wiped and looked after it he went into the garden and picked out the freshest fruits that he had and he filled that bucket full of fruits and he left it at his neighbor's porch at the same neighbor neighbor's porch that brought him that dirt initially. So one of the students of that wise man asked, well, well, why did you do this? Why didn't you go and seek revenge as we all would? Well, he said, well, the reason is we share things that we are in excess of. So think about an analogy of a glass full. When your glass is full, you're full with water, fresh water, for example. You want to share that because this is who you are. This is what you're in excess, in excess of. But if you're hollow and you, you are rotten on the inside, well, you can only imagine what you will share with the world. So, so the lesson here is, is quite powerful to treat people from a stance of what you are in excess of. So as I said, if you are watching this video, chances are you are a lovely person, you're kind, you're generous, you're full of love, you're very sensitive, all these gorgeous things. That's, chances are that's why you became a target of these difficult people because they see that as a weakness, however, this is a strength. And, and if you enhance those qualities, if you continue being nice to people like that, well, guess what? Um, a few things will happen. Well, first of all, they don't have control over you. Because when the minute you, you decide that hate, anger, 
anxiety, depression and all these things that that person is causing you, when you decide this ends with me and the moment you decide love starts with me, generosity starts with me, kindness starts with me because why? Because this is who I am. No matter how anyone treats me, this is who I am, this is what I have in me so much that it's in excess that I'm willing to share this with other people. And when you operate from that stance, you don't take on the negativity from the difficult individual that you have an issue with. You also spread this um, vibe to other people and you become inspirational to other people too. Think about it. The amount of times you have remembered that one good person that was generous and kind to others. And while you do remember the villains as well, but you kind of think about them as, oh yeah, that person wasn't nice and that's about it, you know. But you always remember that person that was nice and you do go on and tell your kids and grandkids about that one person that you met 20 years ago that was nice to you and your family or whatever the case was. So imagine if you became that person one day and everyone talked about, oh yeah, I remember that person, lovely person was nice regardless of how anyone treated them. And this is not the same as being a doormat. As I said, you know, if we go back to our second point, well, we can show empathy towards other people. We also take a healthy step back. We know our boundary there, you know, we know when to say no. So we have that in us as well. That doesn't make us a doormat by any, by any means, you know. So, you know, it's not the same as being a doormat. You're just being yourself and, and you're not giving that control to anybody, not just a difficult individual, but anybody to control you and dictate how you want to be. So think about this for a second and definitely how I think about who you are and if and if you're not sure who it is that you are it's definitely a good exercise to sit down with yourself set 30 minutes a day and write out what qualities qualities make you who you are what qualities you bring to the tables what qualities make you feel very proud about yourself what things have you done for yourself and other people that make you feel so proud and happy about yourself, the wonderful individual that you are? Anyway, guys, and this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And remember, everything you do, do it from a stance of love as opposed to from a stance of anger and fear. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely subscribe to my channel and like this video if you happen to resonate with the content of this video and I will speak to you soon.